Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Mr. Spike Cohen, 2020 Libertarian Vice Presidential Candidate Chair of You Are the Power. All right, this should be fascinating. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Dr. Richie. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for being on the show. Uh, we're going to chop it up about two subjects primarily. One sure. will be social media censorship. And if we have time, we will talk about mask mandates in America. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about social media censorship. So if you would, give us your sentiment and I will respond. That is my favorite opening question question for an interview. I don't want to presume what you think, so just say what you think, and then I'll tell you what I think. I love That's it. That's right. Um, so when it comes to social media censorship, I mean, social media was kind of a wild west for quite a while. And the internet in general was kind of a wild west where almost anything went. Uh, I guess with social media, there was some limitations. You couldn't make death threats. You couldn't engage in in you know absolute threats and things like that. Um, but for the most part, it was pretty wide open, and that seemed to first start changing around 2016, 2017, and then really in earnest in 2018 and 2019. Um, I think first of all, it's clear to know that if you are talking about a social media company, a private company has the right to. Uh, limit what they want on their platform. That's actually their First Amendment right, and that that often gets confused in the debate. Uh, someone who thinks that they're being censored by a private company thinks their First Amendment right is being limited. That's actually not true, unless you can show that there was either direct government action or coercion from government. Then, in fact, it is the social media company is exercising their First Amendment right uh, to choose not to allow that on their platform. Um, which is where we get into kind of the nuance here. Uh, Starting in 2018 was when we really started to see the heavier levels of censorship, not just on the right, but also on the left. Really, anything outside of the the uh, I guess uh, the the Overton window of mainstream opinion. The further you were from it, the more likely you were to be censored. Uh, that's when the fact checking started in earnest, um, and that's also when Mark Zuckerberg joined a group called the Atlantic Council, uh, which is a it started as a NATO lobbying group. It has since just become kind of a, a general uh, military industrial. Company. Complex uh, lobbying group. Uh, it, its boards, uh, board members, a who's who of military contractors, foreign dictators, multi billionaires. And uh, it seems like after that happened was when you really started seeing the much more heavy handed level of censorship and then this new era of the so called fact checking. Um, and I think that it's worth looking into how much of this is. Uh, the private decisions of private companies, okay. uh, which then the answer to that is if you are being censored to create our own social media alternatives so that we aren't being censored and how much of it is actually being guided or coerced by government actors. And I think that's where we get caught up in the nuance and the detail uh, of that. You know, I agree with about 80% of what you said. Now, you're a libertarian. Typically, libertarians, I can have conversations with you guys because you derive <laughs> your political ideology from libertas, the the Latin word for freedom. And you believe in individualism, you believe in less government. You have a integrity, you have an integrity connected to your political philosophy, even though I disagree right. with it in many conclusions. I understand how you get to the decision right. and usually there's linear logic. So what you just explained was linear logic, What, which by the way does not exist with many Republicans and Trump supporters. Because right now you literally have a class action lawsuit being spearheaded by Donald Trump and major conservative pundits yeah. who are saying they are being specifically targeted and illegally discriminated against. Now I want to remind people, discrimination in all forms is not illegal. There is legal discrimination that's allowable. They're claiming they are being illegally discriminated against because private companies are regulating their freedom of speech. Well, as you just noted, sir, private companies, they have a freedom codified in the US Constitution that says very clearly, this is their arena. And the government has a restriction in that constitution also that says they cannot really get involved in these speech limiting exercises. So here's the hypocrisy that you have on the right. And libertarians are still right leaning individuals. That's why I'm posing this question to you. Mm -hmm. On the right, you literally have a political ideology that says the government 
cannot get involved in regulating speech. And you have a former president not suing the government, but suing a private company as if they are the government, claiming that these non governmental entities are in constitutional violation for creating restrictions on their platform. And you know that does not pass the intellectual test here. So why do you think there's such an intentional blurring of the lines as it relates to the narrative and the conversation about freedom of speech and the regulation of content on social media in the United States of America? Well, I mean, the short answer is because they're being flaming hypocrites. I think mm. Donald Trump's lawsuit is dead on arrival. I think yeah. that it is largely a twofold thing. One, he's trying to promote a possible run for reelection for president or being elected again. I guess that's still technically reelection. But also, he's also trying to promote his social media company, Truth Social, or whatever it's called. Which, by the way, we can talk a little bit later about some of the censorship that happens on these conservative platforms, social media platforms. But so I think it's it's. It's a cynical ploy, and I don't think that they actually think the lawsuit's going to go anywhere. Donald Trump actually has a long history of filing lawsuits and then not really rigorously pursuing them in any real way. I do think it is worth exploring, though, when you see, for example, late last year, both Jen Psaki and and Joe Biden made allusions to their desire for Facebook, particularly to censor what they were calling misinformation or disinformation. And Joe Biden going as far as saying that Facebook is killing people by allowing certain things to be said on their platform. And then in almost immediate response to that, Facebook then tightened up what they were allowing and not allowing when it came to talk about mm. vaccines and masks and things like that. All so right. I think there are incidents where we can point to government coerced or government threatened action that can okay. lead to that happening. But overall, no, I think that I think that the answer to fixing this as in all things is in the market. I think we need to be looking at it, it as Facebook, if the trend continues where Facebook and Twitter and other the, 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 the big tech companies are continuing to widen their uh, their their uh, dragnet of what they allow and don't allow and what they're gonna fact check and not fact check, that creates a bigger and bigger market of people who are going to look elsewhere for social media. Yeah. Uh, and that is where we can look at things like more decentralized forms of social media, uh, media where you control the platform, you control your node or your server so that you actually can control what's on there and decide what is allowed or what isn't allowed as opposed to someone imposing that on you. And truth social is not going to be that, by the way. Yeah, I know that it's a hypocrite, it's a hypocrisy in itself. Okay, so you said something really interesting that I would like to dissect. Sure. You talked about Joe Biden's statement and I've heard this argument before that Joe Biden made public statements and then based on these public statements, other companies, it seems as if there's a cause and effect relationship with what other companies have done in the social media space based on these very public proclamations of President Joe Biden. But let me remind you of something. If you're saying that's government censorship, or if you're alluding that that needs to be investigated as government coordination with a private company, let me bring to your attention the NFL. Would you agree with me that when Colin Kaepernick took a knee, that was in fact a peaceful protest? Of course. It was President Donald Trump who was president at the time, mm -hmm. who came out against that peaceful protest, yep. told the NFL what they should do to Colin Kaepernick. Yes. And guess what? What he said ended up happening to Colin Kaepernick. Yes. So if you're comparing what Biden said as a collusion of government with a private entity, mm -hmm. would you not also suggest or say flat out that what Trump did was illegal and a constitutional violation by way of governmental restriction as well against Kaepernick. I don't, I don't know that either is a legal or a constitutional okay. violation. I want to be clear on that. All right. I am saying that both of those are examples of at least a blurred line mm. between true government censorship in in what we would call like you know a government saying you're not allowed to say this yes. and true private action where it's just a private company there's at the very least a blurred line there and we need to get more into that and maybe it does take investigation or it may take additional legislation to make clear what that line is or even just a public debate on that whatever that blurred line is yes that's another perfect example of that uh Donald Trump going on uh, even though he was claim he could claim oh I did that as candidate Trump 
he was literally the president when he right. said it and him going out and saying the NFL should do this and we should respond this way. Uh, and then the NFL literally doing uh, for the most part uh, what he was calling for. I would say that that would yeah, that would definitely be an example of that. Anytime that you have a politician that is trying to pressure uh, through their, uh, you know, through their actions, trying to pressure a company to do something, and then you see almost immediately that thing, all or mostly happening. That's at least worth pursuing further to see how far has that line been blurred. You know, this is really interesting because, and, and I just had another libertarian, University of Pennsylvania political science student, black woman on the show just a few days ago, right? Olivia and Rana. A, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Remarkable scholar. Right? Yeah, she's amazing. She's amazing. Intellectual integrity, she's growing, she's maturing. And as she's more authentic about her pursuit for policy truth, she's becoming more libertarian by the day because she yes. started as a Trump supporting conservative, right? And I think a lot of people started who are kind of new in the political game and they came because of Trump. They started because they did not like business as usual. Now, obviously, yes. we know that there are significant connections to the white supremacy movement. There's significant connection to bigotry in America. But there's also this connection with people like her and, and I think yourself. <clears throat> you all were looking for something new, something different, something that was not you know, part of the, part of the course. And Donald Trump provided that. Now, I disagree with Trump on virtually 100% of everything. Policy wise. Mm -hmm. And I think he's a horrible individual. He cannot land a message without being offensive and hurting members of the community that I love, right? So let me pose and this. Defrauding question. people as well. And defrauding people because he's yep. a con artist. So let me ask you this. You all, the libertarians, all right? You all are now more so the conscience of the conservative party. So what do you do? to hold others accountable inside of your right leaning political sphere to a more policy related dynamic in this country. Uh, so I, I don't really tie us as closely as I think you are to specifically the conservative movement. Okay. Many of us did come out of the conservative movement. I was pre-Trump. I came out right. from supporting George Bush. That's how far back I, I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself a little here. But that's when I realized the conservative movement was a, was a joke and, and I, I moved on to becoming a libertarian. I, I achieved my final form as it were. Uh, but <laughs> when it comes to, uh, when it comes to that, you know, Depending on the issue we're talking about, I could start talking with you about gun rights, about taxes, about and the we will probably Reserve, agree. And you would think I'm a far right winger, but then if I start talking about criminal justice reform, the war on drugs, police reform, and, and uh, you know systemic racism, you might you might otherwise think I'm a far left winger. Um, I like to think that libertarians are the conscious of those who recognize that something is wrong with our system. You mentioned white supremacy. I would love to think that white supremacy began and ended in government with Donald Trump, but you and I both know that that's certainly not the case. Uh, Donald Trump certainly did a lot of uh, uh, dog whistle cheerleading for white supremacy. But the reality of, of our government is uh, even if the people, and this is where the idea of systemic racism comes from, obviously, even if the people that are currently manipulating the system are doing so for non racist reasons, the people that have originally set up the system often did so for racist and certainly for elitist reasons and reasons of preservation of their own power and authority. And, you know, libertarianism, part of libertarianism is deconstructing the reality that our entire system, the reason it resembles so many aspects of fascism is because that's what it is. It is a fascist system and it is built on the preservation of power of a very small handful of incredibly cynical sociopathic people. And until we fully examine that, then we're never truly going to get anywhere. Whether we're talking about social media censorship, whether we're talking about the COVID restrictions, whether we're talking about criminal justice, the wars, anything. If we don't drive down into the basis of why we're even here in the first place, we're often just you know treating, putting band-aids on, on wounds. Man, I can appreciate everything you just said. Now, that commentary, I probably agree with 95% of it, all right? We're just slight pushback. We're, go, we're getting better, we're going up. <laughs> we're, getting, yeah. we're getting much better. <laughs> uh, once again, I echo what I said in, in the beginning. I can have legitimate conversations with libertarians yep. nine times out of nine, all right? So let's go back to the isms you talked about. Sure. Um, obviously, racism, classism, sexism at the core of hierarchy and governmental structure. Mm -hmm. What we saw in the personification of Donald Trump was not really about Trump. Trump is a product. Trump had to be manufactured, however. Somebody had to put him there. He's a product, he's an expression. You got a new election cycle coming around. 
it seems as if Trump may run, and if he doesn't run, he will be heavily involved yep. in shaping the Republican Party and politics in general in America. What are your thoughts about those who are libertarian? Because there's a guy, former Congressman Trey Raider, out of Florida. He's a radio show host. He's libertarian, right? But he has to play this game. My dear brother has to play this game because he's now in the corner as it relates to Trump policies, DeSantis, who's his friend, and his ability to transform policy inside of that conservative right. network. What, yeah. What's your response to libertarians or those who are right leaning who see that there's something very wrong with Trump style politics? So this has been an ongoing debate in libertarian circles. There are a lot of libertarians who feel like on the whole that Republicans uh, at least small government Republicans, maybe not this populist Trumpist movement, but small government Republicans more closely reflect libertarians in elected office mm. than anything that we see in the in the Democratic Party. And I, I think it depends on the on the subject. But part of that problem is if you are trying to change the Republican Party from the inside, you're inevitably going to get sucked into the Republican Party. And tell me why. What, why, why do you that? say that? I agree with you. I agree with you. But tell us why. Oh, because the the prevailing narrative right now is counterculture to the right. prevailing culture, which is kind of a center left progressivism. So this is that reactionary right wing reaction, similar to the reactionary left wing reaction we saw from the 80s and 90s, where center right neoconservatism was in charge of everything. And so now it's their turn to be the the populist reactionaries. And I think the the Republican Party is either going to take America to a really weird place, or it's going to crumble. And and hopefully, you know, libertarians. Can come in and 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 rec- show people that this was never about you know the uh, left versus right or red versus blue. This is about the individual individual people that make up the American Republic against a very small number of, of powerful people who are trying to control them. I'm not a Democrat. People are surprised when I say that. I've been saying it for years. Uh, I'm a progressive because I believe in progress. Yep. Here's the reality, man. I don't like the two party system. Can't stand it. We have to operate within that system, but I don't like it. It does a disservice to the common person. You know who it benefits? Corporations. It benefits the elite. It makes it easy for them to pick winners and winners, right? That's exactly what they do every election cycle. So, so let me let me go to this space because libertarians in Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, Alabama, they always run statewide. You always have libertarians running statewide Mm -hmm. in these southern states, but you don't see the same vigor for libertarianism in some of the Midwest or maybe states um, that are in the uh, North. So why do you think that is and how, because I want a better conservative party. Let me tell you why I want a better conservative party. The conservative movement is so crazy right now, so insane, that Democrats can get away with whatever. They can get away with lying to us, saying they're going to deliver something, not deliver it. And then when election time comes up, they say, well, hell, you gonna vote for me or him? Exactly. Yep, it's good cop, bad cop. And right now, the Democrats, because they're the prevailing culture right now, especially in, in, in corporate media and pop culture, they can present themselves. We're the good guys, look at these crazy people over here. Uh, and it's a similar dynamic, but switched around from what we saw maybe 20, 30, or 40 years ago. Um, but the, the short answer to that uh, is that uh, libertarians are never going to win at that level until we get over the main objection that voters have to us, which is you can't win. What I'm doing with You Are the Power is to rebut that instead of trying to focus on candidates running for these large statewide and national offices, instead giving them localized activism on things that we agree on. You and I agree on police reform and criminal justice reform. Right, well, correct. great, let's do activism in that arena together. Someone else agrees with me on mask mandates or on gun control, great, so let's go work together on that. And in doing so, we can show that libertarians aren't just people that are dreaming for the moon and never getting there, but we're actually working towards a goal of helping to transform people's lives by making them more free. That's how we're going to show that we can win by actually winning where we can. And win. Yeah, we got to decentralize this tribalism in politics. It's been indoctrinated Absolutely. into us to believe that the framework has to be through Dems or Republicans, and that's the exactly. only way to work for progress. Listen, man, I don't agree with everything you believe in. I don't agree with all of your policy and conclusions, but I agree with some of them. But I got to tell you this, man, conversations like this, they move everybody in the right direction. Honest, transparent, thoughtful, and authentic. I appreciate you being on the bullpen. I appreciate you too, Dr. Richie. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. All right. Jordan Yule, the big homie is next. Remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.